Introduction Objective to understand the concept of semiconductors Between the extremes of good conductors and bad conductors, we have an important group called the semiconductors. Consider a substance like silicon. At room temperature, only a few of its valence electrons are able to break free from their bonds. Due to this, silicon contains a small number of free electrons. On applying a potential difference across the ends of this rod, the small number of free electrons available start drifting in a particular direction. They constitute a small amount of current, which can be detected by a sensitive current meter. Such substances which contain small amount of free electrons thereby allowing a small amount of current to pass through them are called semiconductors. The small current does not have any practical application. However, on adding certain impurities like arsenic to this substance, the number of free electrons increases to about 10 to the 22 electrons per meter cube. In this way, the conductivity of a semiconductor can be increased. This process of adding impurities to a semiconductor with the purpose of increasing its conductivity is called doping. Later on, we will study about it in detail. The conductivity of a semiconductor can also be increased by increasing its temperature. Besides silicon, germanium is another example of the semiconductor which is widely used in transistors. Summary Hence, we have seen that the presence of a large number of free electrons makes a substance a good conductor. While the presence of a small number of free electrons in some substances allows only a little conduction of current in them, these substances are called semiconductors. The absence of free electrons in a material makes it a bad conductor. So, depending on the amount of free electrons in a substance, we can classify them into good conductors, semiconductors and bad conductors.